Welcome to today's episode of Door Church Connect, where weekly we present uh, our podcast about living and uh, thinking uh, biblically so that your life grows and is blessed. And I'm very excited about two things today in this episode. One is our guest. And second is the topic that we're going to delve into. And so we're very glad to have as our guest, Brandon Reed. Now, uh, I've got to uh, set context here. Context is everything. Uh, Brandon, and he uh, testifies to this fact, he can't escape it, I'm sorry, is the son of Larry Reed. And in our fellowship of churches, Larry Reed uh, ranks as a legend. And uh, Larry was instrumental in the very, very beginnings of our fellowship uh, and uh, his relationship with Pastor Mitchell and others uh, really became the seed that God used uh, to bring a great uh, revival. And in our own church, looking back over the years, when I would announce uh, Larry Reed's coming for revival, the place went wild, you know, the... I mean, his, some of his revivals were absolutely epic, and they really were a part of laying the foundations of our church and uh, the ministry that God has uh, given us uh, today. And I think uh, one of the greatest compliments that you can give people is imitation and godly, listen to what I'm saying, godly mockery. Godly <laughs> mockery. I, you know, you may not have ever thought about that, but over the years, people have used uh, sayings from uh, Brandon's dad. They've uh, tried... You can't lose with the stuff we use. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, you know mainlining Jesus and, uh, uh, dear. And so it was part of, uh, uh, you know, the beginnings. And, uh, the good thing about Brandon is we've talked before is that he is his own man. Uh, in fact, his dad told him, uh, you know what, just be Brandon. You don't have to be me. Uh, I don't think there's ever going to be a, another Larry Reed, not with that kind of testimony and uh, uh, flair and dynamic. And uh, uh, and so uh, he's not, uh, the good thing is he's not sitting here feeling uh, neglected because, you know, oh, you're the son of Larry Reed. It would be like Andrew in the Bible who was Peter's brother. I'm sure mm -hmm. a hundred times, thousands in probably, Andrew, oh, yeah, I'm at, oh, you're Peter's brother. And so, but uh, Brandon is secure in his identity and as far as I'm concerned, his status uh, of being Larry Reed's son uh, carries huge weight uh, with me and many in our church. So, Brandon, we're glad that you're here. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do that one. Yeah. But... Yeah, I, I, thanks for having me. It's, it's, I feel like when I come here, it's, it's like a home away from home, you know? And uh, I'm just, I'm excited about the topic today. Yes. And I think a lot of people um, that were raised in church, raised in ministry, uh, this will hopefully hit home for them. 
And so I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, uh, like my dad would say, you know, if, if anything goes down, if something, you know, if I say something that may not go right or could come back against me, every man for himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. When the police would come on outreaches, yeah. he'd be the first to disappear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, where'd you go? <laughs> Yeah, so I understand <laughs> that completely. And our topic today is, uh, I called it monitoring your EQ or your emotional intelligence, your emotional health. And we're going to talk about the issue of uh, mental health and what really stood out. Uh, when Brandon came the first time and did a concert on Saturday, I was uh, studying uh, for Sunday. I wasn't able to be there, but I called uh, Pastor Gabe, how's it going? And he said it's uh, going very, very good. But he made the statement to me that uh, this guy would be tremendous in a regular service also because He's talking about things. He's transparent about things that a lot of people mm -hmm. do not uh, talk about, and that mm -hmm. is issues relating to emotional health. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. if nothing else, I congratulate you that you've overcome some of the stigma. Right. Because uh, there is a stigma uh, in, yeah. in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have cancer... God can heal you. If you have other uh, right, maladies, yeah. God can touch you. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you start talking about mental and emotional health... You're crazy. Yeah, then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're crazy. A straight uh, line between those two subjects, right? Yeah, and so we don't want to, you know... We're not going to listen to a crazy man, but the problem... <laughs> With that is people are just uh, covering up what really sure. is a part of humanity. Just like your physical body mm -hmm. uh, can get sick, uh, you can uh, be injured, uh, and an ailment. Our mind, our emotions uh, can go through the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot about physical trauma from, you know, I won't uh, go into the long list, uh, but emotional and mental trauma is very, very real. And you have lots of people, and I'm sure you've seen some of this, mm -hmm. lots of people in good Bible preaching churches mm -hmm that wrestle with this uh, area of emotional, mental health, and they feel very guilty. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I shouldn't have any of these things. Right. So uh, probably, I'm sure... Probably you're... more so as a Christian, hmm. especially being raised in church. So my story is, uh, I tell people, this is kind of my opener, there's two things that I never thought I'd face in my life as a Christian. One, I never thought I'd have identical twin boys, which I do. They're 16 now. <laughs> I was like, wow. wow, twins, that's weird. Something you kind of see in school. You're like, hey, look at that. That looks funny, you know? <laughs> I had twins. Go figure. And second, I never, ever thought that I would be diagnosed with a mental disorder. You yeah. know, I, I, when I turned 30, I was diagnosed with severe obsessive compulsive disorder. Now... I didn't even know what that was. I, I remember seeing a TV show where a guy was like, it was, I can't remember the show was based off of this guy who had OCD back in like the 2000s and whatnot. I'm like, are you talking about that thing? I have that. I just thought of it as like spiritual warfare or something that I, I wasn't even um, aware of. But I tell you what, my wife was sure aware of it, you mm -hmm. know, because it slowly, subtly was taking over my life. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, I battled with that, ups and downs, overcoming, falling back, overcoming for about over a decade. So how did this, uh, did you recognize uh, 
the I, beginnings of this absolutely, at all? Absolutely, yeah. So um, I've always, I was raised in church all my life. Yeah. Started working uh, at church for my father-in-law, Larry Huck, at, at New Beginnings. I'm about to where my dad was stationed in Portland. And, and so I through the dot-com era, I started programming, developing websites. So literally, I've always been a very tenacious person when it came to, if you tell me I can't do it, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I was kind of an entrepreneur, you know, always pushing, 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 um, which is a good thing. But in hindsight, um, probably could have done that a little more skillfully. So I, I, there was a lot of stress in my life. I had twin boys. I was moving constantly in ministry. And I'm sitting behind a desk all day programming, if this, then this, if this, then this. And just literally around the clock, not getting much sleep. And slowly I would find myself a period of time with some, uh, really a heavy anxiety. And so obsessive compulsive disorder is really an anxiety disorder. And it's something that um, there's so many factors that play in, in, involved of what they deem as a disorder, which I know now is just kind of not the correct term for that. It's really yeah. a, a gift of mine just out of whack. Yeah. So when I turned 30, uh, strangely enough, I just ended up um, finding myself checking the door. Did I, did I lock the front door? You know, go back and check if I locked the front door. Did I turn the furnace off? Did I touch something dirty? I need to wash my hands. Well, let me go back and wash them again. I know I just wash them, but I just feel this anxiety, this uh, tremendous. And I knew, I knew it was cr weird. I knew it was not me, but the, the, the obsessiveness of it and the compulsion combined to act out that thing that I needed to do to be certain that I took care of had a hold of my life and it slowly would creep itself. And so I would find myself trying to, I was my own Petri dish, you know, I, I have Google, you know, actually my wife first figured out, I think my, before the doctor, <laughs> I think my husband has OCD. She just figured it out. And then luckily I, I went to, uh, there was a doctor by the name of Frank Minrith and he was one of the leading guys. Yeah, I know his um, name. Yeah, he's a tremendous author. And I remember walking into the Minerva Clinic. And, and at this point, I had really, this is over the course of the first year from like age 30 to 31, I ended up just diving into a darkness. Just a, I, I couldn't get a hold of it. I mean, it was ridiculous. I, I, one of my big things was, you know, uh, confessing. Mm -hmm. And and maybe somebody out there that's listening to this podcast knows what I'm talking about because as a Christian, the first thing you do is when you can't figure out what's going on, you begin to look inwardly. Yeah, I must be something's wrong with me or I must have sinned. Or exactly. Taking so, a wedge of gold in a Babylonian garment from <laughs> Jericho. Yeah. You start to uproot all this stuff like, okay, let me dig into my past. Is this something that I've done? And and there's and for somebody with OCD, it's like, oh, that's what you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I didn't know this, but I walked into that clinic and I sat down in that lobby and I looked around at everybody sitting there and I saw some crazy people there. Tick disorders, people just we you know, strange. And I said, What am I doing here? Hmm. What in the world am I doing here? I'm Larry Reed's son. I've been a Christian all my life. What am I doing in this mental health, men mental ward, you know, so to speak, clinic? And I walked back to Dr. Minnerith, and he begins to talk to me about my brain. See, the frontal cortex, Brandon, and he's just going, and I'm just like, this is, <laughs> what in the world is going on? But he was a strong Christian. He says, Martin Luther had this. This is very common. Great men have this. And I said, I asked him, Dr. Minnerith, can I be cured of this? Because my faith, you know, everything during that whole era of Christianity in the 2000s, it was just faith and confessing and don't say anything negative. And, you know, so my, my character, what I was built on, rejected the idea that I had this label of this disorder. And I asked him, well, can I be cured of this? He says, maybe. You, you probably learned to manage it. I didn't like that. Yeah. I didn't like the word manage, you know. And I walked out of there and... Over the course of 10 years, I, I, like I said, I was my own, I began to learn just through trial and error of coming off of medication, going back on it, supplementing, diet, 
I learned that it's not just this. Is it spiritual? Yes, everything is spiritual. Yeah. The, the, we're sitting here in this table, looking at each other, talking, making sounds. Everything is spiritual, but there's a physical attribute that is right. a direct has a direct effect on the way that we behave and function. And the Christian church needs to grab a hold of this whole. You know, uh, it, it, it's a it's it's convoluted in a way. You know. And so that's why I enjoy talking to you because last time I came here, it seems like you grabbed a hold of that, uh, those gray areas. And yeah. you're saying, oh, we're made of soul and spirit. And so I was like, this guy gets me. Yeah. He understands me, but I don't know how to necessarily articulate it. Sometimes I best articulate it just via a song. Yeah. And it just it opens her heart. And, uh, you know, I was just talking with Gabe. We were, we were, we were talking, discussing. I think last time I was here, I showed my testimony and I said, is anybody else dealing with that? And literally... <laughs> hands, yeah, hands. <laughs> no, no, I think maybe a couple hands were raised, yeah. if that. Yeah, it was crickets. But afterwards, there yeah. was a massive line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I found my people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but l- let, me, let me jump in. Let me ask you a question here because I, yeah. I want to go to the sink, Okay. When you are, how, first of all, how slippery is the slope? And second, when you're washing your hands, the first couple of times you're realizing, like, this is a thing. This isn't just a one-off. I'm doing this way too much. Mm-hmm. Take us there. Yeah. Well, because the thing is, is it's not, it's, it's, yes, it's a conscious decision that you're making, but the whole time you have this ridiculous anxiety. Hmm. So this anxiety is, is what's propelling you to, to, to take little things that just normally would be you know, nonchalant, like, yeah, I just washed my hands. But because in your brain, it's, it's basically it's a circuit. It's like I'm not feeling the satisfaction of my brain saying that's done because there's this underlying anxiety. There's something out of whack within the chemicals of my brain that's causing me to, to feel that way. You know, um, when I, and, and I used to think, how can that be? Like, come on, you're a Christian. How, and how could, how could anybody be depressed, let's say? Like, no. we talk about OCD or we talk about people who are bipolar or people with PTSD and all these different things. When you talk about people with, with clinical depression, you're like, how could that be you're a Christian? You know, I, I think my dad would probably maybe have a hard time with it as well, you know? But... I've seen little kids struggle with tick disorders. It ain't making it up. It's something that is, in a, it's a product of all kinds of things. What we, yes, it's spiritual, but it's, it's within our genetics. It's what we eat. It's sure. how we sleep. It's how we were raised. It's, it's something that the church just can't, it's not a, a quick fix. Yeah. It's something that God is wanting to bring the body together and say, hey, how beautiful can this healing be when other people are take part in it together? Yeah. That's what I think God's doing with this. Uh, can he deliver somebody like that? Yeah, he can. You better believe he can. Whether he chooses to or not, based on his purpose, I think the reason God used me to, to go through this is because he knows that the people that struggle with things that they can't, they just can't seem to get past it. They're good-hearted people. They love Jesus. They've been in church. They can't get past it, but they need somebody that has empathy. Empathy. Pastor knows what it's like to yeah. be in a wheelchair for 40, 50 years. You know, you know, you, you can you can maybe talk to somebody differently that maybe came out of Desert Storm that yeah. can't, you know what I'm saying? There's something there that hits home. So I think that. God has a purpose, and ultimately, do, today, do I struggle with that? Nothing. I don't struggle with any OCD. I don't struggle with no depression. I'm f- as far as I am, I'm free. Do I have to manage it? Yeah, I have to keep it at bay at sometimes. I, if, if I if I sense it, yeah, but that's okay because I'm overcome. I'm, I'm constantly overcoming, and I'm okay to to be in that that classification. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't think uh, manage is a bad word. Nah. Uh, and so, uh, 
this is not heresy, but sometimes we think deliverance is the answer to everything. Now, you have experienced a kind of deliverance, but it hasn't just been uh, a prayer line and someone laying hands on you. It's been through the process of life and managing those things right. and realizing this is okay. I'm right. okay. I just am, uh, you know what? I have a uh, manufacturer's defect. <laughs> not that God, not that God uh, right. did it, but sin right. there you go. Uh, manifests in a lot of ways. And so that's why I think when we first talked, you know, I've probably preached five sermons in the last uh, two to three years mm-hmm. on mental health. Yeah, I remember I was listening to one of them. Very, yeah. uh, various aspects. And that scripture in First Thessalonians, I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved to the coming of Jesus. And so... It says we're spirit, soul, and body, and a lot of Christians would say amen to that, but they don't, uh, wait a minute, that means that your body affects your spirit. Oh, 100%. Your spirit affects your body and your, you know, your emotions. Uh, uh, I had uh, just... uh, uh, I long story. I won't even go into it, but an allergic reaction, probably triggered by COVID, where I had to go to the hospital. I was intubated mm-hmm. for two days. Mm-hmm. I was conscious. Oh, I was man. aware, but uh, I can tell you that our elder brother, capital E, capital B, our elder brother's adversary didn't give me a break and say, oh, he's in the hospital, Mm -hmm. poor guy. No, he started, uh, you know, you talk about mind battles. The good thing is I knew that they were mind battles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, that uh, connection, and some have tried to take a scalpel Mm -hmm. and let's, okay, this is spirit, (laughs) <laughs> this is soul, right. Good this luck. is body, this is will, this is emotions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't uh, do that because all of them together mm-hmm. make us uh, who we are. This is why we uh, are talking about this now because we've already dealt uh, with Luke 2.52, that Jesus grew. Jesus Mm -hmm. grew. And and the fact that, wait a minute, our Lord and Savior had to grow Mm -hmm. is a a whole other topic. But he grew in wisdom intellectually. He grew in stature uh, physically. He grew in favor with God and favor with man. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things together... Mm-hmm. Uh, made him that perfect God man that uh, eventually went to the cross and paid the price so that we could be saved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you talking about it is uh, that's again what uh, drew me is that wait a minute, here's a guy who you know people will label you as uh, what is he crazy you know Mm -hmm. because in their minds when they hear the word mental illness Mm -hmm. they think of someone in a gown that's drooling from the mouth that's open (laughs) in in the back you know where they're semi comatose yeah walking around in in a psych ward and you know while there are those that are that extreme sure we're not talking about that. We're talking about those things that hinder us from becoming all that God wants us to be and the wellness that he wants to uh, really introduce into all of our lives. And mm-hmm. so, you know, when you talk about manage and managing uh, this issue, I think 
That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And the reason is I have to manage every day right. the fact that I'm in a wheelchair right. and all kinds of things, uh, 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 you know, and it's, it's called life. Right. And, Lord, you're going to help me. And uh, through it all, I'm, I want to have joy. I want to uh, represent you and your kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's the thing that triggered me is hear someone talking about what is, a, is taboo. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't mm -hmm. talk about that. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't deal with that, but it's real. Yeah, the church needs to talk about it because if we don't, the world will talk about it and they'll give alternative answers, hmm. you know, yeah. weird, so, weird ones. Yeah. I think the, the, probably the, I think I was talking with, with, with you this morning about this, Gabe, the idea of who has, well, if I look back and think, Lord, what was it that you, what did you do to, to save me? How, what, cause it, there was deliverance points in my life, in my walk through these, 10 years. You know, I remember being up in my, in my, uh, in my room in one, in a house that was way too big. That's part of the reason I was so stressed out. I <laughs> bought one of those Dallas homes that was like 45,000 square feet and I couldn't afford and <laughs> had twin by, there was a rest, there was a recipe why I went a little bit bonkers. There's a backstory. <laughs> always. There's a backstory. Um, but I feel like I, 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 I went up to my room and I would, I, would, I mean, I would stay the course. I would pray. I would lay hold of God. I read so much Bible. I dived into the books. I got prayed for the, the most famous preachers. I talked to my dad. Dad, this is going down. He would just look at me like, yeah, yeah, you're going to be okay. You know, He couldn't really put a handle on it. But you know the person that, that really understood me were two people, my mom <laughs> and my wife. Yeah, yeah. This gentleness about me because my dad and everybody would just, you want that, just deliverance. Come on, Shondo, and is this cast it out? But I would have experiences, Pastor, where I would be by myself in my room, cry out to God, save me, because I was tormented mm -hmm. relentlessly. And I fell into such depression because I couldn't overcome it. I was, I was running marathons. I was doing, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not no slouch, you know, yeah. but I just, when it's, I used to think like in my mind, Lord, I wish I had a different illness because this one affects my mind. It affects the way that I, I have a defense. I can combat. Well, I, I felt robbed. And I remember cussing God out, just be so angry with him. How could you do this to me? How could you do this to me after everything I've done for you? And I remember storming out of the house. My wife's thinking she's not going to see me again because I'm going to just run off and go crazy. But there were times I, I'm upstairs in that big unfurnished house in this uh, un, this room tucked back, way back, and I just lay hold of God. He'd fill me with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking like baptize me in an in a authoritative tongue, like just erupt out of me. And yeah. I would just be like, oh, my God, how could this be so real? And then I would walk away. I still have OCD. What in the world? What? And then I, I began over the years to read what Paul said. And I think for me, this is, this is the scripture that I root myself into is um, 2 Corinthians, is it 10 or 8, where he talked about the thorn in his flesh? Right. Uh, it's 12. 12. Yeah, you're right. 2 Corinthians 12, where he talks about it. He talks about boasting. Yeah. You know, he talks about all these braggadocious super apostles that are boasting and whatnot. And he says, look, if I, if, if, if I got something to boast, if I, if, I, if I want to boast about what I know, I can say it and I wouldn't be a fool doing it. But instead, I refrain. He has a leash on what he's boasting. God put a thorn in his flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment him to keep him from becoming conceited. Now, that's, I'm not drawing a parallel. That's exactly me. But what I am drawing a parallel to is the weakness that he had. Yeah. He says th that... God told him, my, my grace is sufficient for you, for my, my strength is made perfect. Strength is made perfect in weakness. Strength, weakness. So I delight myself in weaknesses. I, I, knowing that when I am weak, 
Be strong. Be strong. There was a secret there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He says, I, I came to you not with eloquence of words, yeah. but I came to you in weakness and in trembling so that your faith may not rest on man's wisdom, but on the power of God. Yes. He found a secret that really God brought into his life that he understood, oh, you mean that Christians can be strong within their weakness? You better believe it. And I'm beginning to understand as I travel and I'll go around, now I know what my dad had. He had a little something that he knew about when it came to weakness. That's why he, was, he had an ease about what he did. Like, manana, don't worry about it. It's going to be good. God, when, I, when I talked to him, Dad, I, I, wanted, I wanted this solution for when I spilled out my guts to him. Dad, help me. And he just looked at me like, yeah, yeah, you're going to be okay. <laughs> It's not what I wanted to hear, Dad. No, no, that's a, that's a that's a great point because it's 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 one of those things where God isn't tripping on our weakness, like you said. He, he doesn't trip about. It. There's a bigger picture. Yes. In the word that He says, "My strength is made perfect." That word "perfect" is "telio," and that's the same word Jesus used on the cross when He said, "It is finished." It is "telio." So what He's saying is, we don't understand perfection. No. We're tripping over the wrong things, and God's saying, "Oh, it's cool. I got you. Right. Yeah, you're you're all messed up. You're all jacked up. But that's cool because it's perfect. I see the bigger picture, and you're struggling. That's cool. I'm here at the edge of the pool, and I'm going to grab you out of the pool, son. Yeah, I'm letting you struggle a little bit, but that's perfection right there. Yeah, exactly. We don't we don't we don't like that. Uh, if if you think about think about this, uh, we all know it. Hebrews chapter eleven, where it talks about faith. Before I read this, I walked into, I said, I'm going to go get some counseling. Let me try this. Because I, I got on medication, and I got on heavy medication. And I go back, and he said, are you going to hurt yourself? I don't know. Give me more medication. He was, Dr. Menneth was a master at prescribing supplements, vitamins, and he'd give me a recipe of stuff to do, which saved my life. Mm -hmm. Saved my life, that and my wife. And, but... I went into a counseling session. I said, let me give this a shot. <laughs> and the guy says, you know what, Brandon? I've heard OCD be described as this, the necessity to be certain. Hmm. The necessity to be certain. Think about that. And when I read uh, Hebrews 11, it says, now faith is being sure, is the NIV, or you can say being certain, now, faith is being certain of what we hope for. <laughs> yeah, which is a, a complete uncertainty. Yeah. Be, be, I'm certain about what's uncertain. Yes. Certainly. Uh, figure that out. You know, work right. that out. Uh, chew on that, uh, right. and uh, it'll bless you. And what we don't <laughs> see. Yeah. So so with somebody that is, is something physically is happening in their brain. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, I tell people that they feel stigma when they say, oh, I, they, they want to give me medication. You know, first I feel like it's overprescribed, definitely yeah. by just general uh, primary doctors just yep. prescribing med meds. I think you need to go see someone who really knows what they're talking about before you just jump on any SSRI or anything else like that. It's mm -hmm. not for everybody. For me, it was I, it was a lifesaver. I needed it. There was, there was a uh, manufacturer's <laughs> Yeah. Something going on. But, you know, I, 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 I begin to see that, yeah, I, I, God, God was, was working out in my brain a physical solution that was in direct rhythm with my spiritual growth. And I, I would say, God, why, why do I have to deal with this? And I remember uh, I would, one thing I would do is I'd run a lot. I'd get out and I, and pastor, I would, that would be my outlet because I yeah. would, I would wake up in the morning and I'd feel like if I could just get through today, that was the goal. Get through today. And then when I lay back down, I can check out <laughs> yeah, and then start over and just take one day at a time. And I would go run. And those are the times that during my runs, I could literally just cry out to God. I mean, I'm training for marathons and just trying to like push and I'm sitting there weeping as I'm running. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, uh, and I would stop and I would just look around and be like, God, save me, man. I can't do this no more, Lord. But I just keep pushing and I keep pushing and I keep pushing. 
And that was my outlet. And one day when I was running, he said, Brandon, what if I told you this was physical? Because I didn't, Lord, my heart is yeah. pure. And I started to see that. It, that, wow. So the, tri- the, 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 the method of walking that out is understanding and applying this scripture of faith is I'm going to have these false, distorted ways of thinking that are not right, that my human body, my flesh wants to just kind of loop and default to for whatever reason, Yeah. for whatever reason. So I have to be privy to that and know, okay, this is happening, but I have, and, and my body is saying anxiety. My body is telling me these thoughts are true. My body is telling me act on these thoughts, right? That I'm putting you in the mindset of somebody who deals with something like this. And so as you're, as you're dealing with that, you have to tell yourself, Holy Spirit, what do you say? Mm. And what does this word say? Yeah. Yeah. I have to act completely based upon not how I feel, but 100% upon what I know to be true. And it was, it's so anti normal. It's, it's not the way you have to, you have to, the biggest thing, remedy for me aside from medication and, and, and prayer and everything else, was just my wife would be like, let's get out of the house. Let's go to the park. So, yeah, you've mentioned uh, your wife on a, a number of occasions, and uh, we would have uh, had her here, too. <laughs> she would if, testify if she to my with, craziness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here's a witness. Can we call to the stand? Right. But how did she, you know, how did she, what, what were the things she did that helped you? She's stubborn. She's got a little huck spirit in her. She she's no pushover, you know. She's she's um sh- she is str- very strong, um and I just love her too much, you know. I didn't want to lose her, and I almost did. And uh, she just knew that aside from because I, she knew my nature. My nature was figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to research the latest supplements. I'm trying to constantly find the latest book and in, in the thought process, the podcast, the application to to remedy what I'm going through because my life, in my understanding, depended on it. But it consumed me. She knew how to pull me out of that and say, hey, stop it. You're in a whirlwind of, of you're, the very thing you're trying to get out of, you're using to try to solve what you're doing. Come with me to the park and let's grab the kids. And we just go out into the... just. Do the things that don't solve the issue. Right. Do the the counter th- things that you 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 want to you want to try to do to remedy it. That's why I think when, it, when Paul says, "So that Christ's power may rest," hmm. there's a resting of His power that sits on you that just mm-hmm. makes you be like, "Yeah," and that's why uh, my grace is sufficient. Mm means that you can walk out and do those normal things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And even if you're struggling, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And Paul, in a situation where Paul and people have debated what was Paul's uh, thorn and they've come up with all kinds of ideas, (laughs) the text actually says what it is, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. somehow there was a uh, an influence uh, that hell used, and the word buffet means, you know, beat the snot out of you. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, mm-hmm. But in this, uh, that's why, you know, his cr- uh, when he said, I prayed three times, mm-hmm. uh, these weren't... Uh, Pleaded. Yeah, yeah, these weren't light, light prayers. These no. are you up in your room mm-hmm. uh, crying out to God. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, he, he did say, uh, I've got it under control. Yeah, my grace is sufficient. Let, let me mention this. I think probably listeners will will maybe label OCD as um, just little things like ch- making sure something's straight or checking something. Um, but it goes much deeper than that. 
and it has to dive into something that is a little bit messy. You know, like my dad used to say, <laughs> we do uh, his AA group in, up in Portland. It was called, it was under an AA model, but he called it Overcomers. And there were some crazy people. If you've been around my dad, you know that <laughs> he's going to pull in some ex-prostitutes, some people hooked still on meth, some people that are just winos and people who are crazies. And he, and he, the way he said it, <laughs> this may not, this may go over generation Z's head, but he, he would say, he'd start the service like, Hey everybody, welcome to psychos are us. <laughs> 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 and he'd laugh. And he'd laugh and it, it'd be uh, it'd be an immediate dear. immediate release like, oh, everybody's a little messed up and it's okay. It's okay, you know? But yeah, I feel like there there's a part of this anxiety and thought process that's a little bit messy like that. And that has to do with intrusive thoughts. Yeah. Intrusive thoughts are something that um Christians don't want to talk about. And there is there's um, there's reasons for that. It's, it's, we have an imagination. We have things. And it's not, for those of you listening out there, it's not that you're having these thoughts. It's just that your brain is, is your brain is so brilliant. Yeah. Your brain is so amazing that because it's a little bit out of whack, it tends to snatch and grab something and focus on one thing and it won't let it go. Because it's just, your system is out of whack. In the same way that, and some people say, oh, you know, get over it. How could you do that? You don't need medicine for that. Well, do you take medicine for allergies? Do you take medicine for, are you di diabetes? Do you have high cholesterol? You know, are you angry at your kidneys, your heart, your, you know, but it has to do with the organ called your brain, mm, right. the operating system. There, there's something there. So it's it's being able to separate your 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 brain versus... Yeah. Who you are, who in your you thought are. process, and your you your your identity. In other words, I'm not going to let this mm -hmm. define exactly who I am, and I can feel already uh, and know about the pushback. Mm -hmm. Is that you know God may give grace by delivering you; He may give grace by helping you walk through it. But uh, there is a pushback mm -hmm. there. The, mm -hmm. God's grace is not this passive uh, no. uh, thing at all. It is aggressive against those very things that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. trouble us. Yeah, when you said a few minutes ago that your grace is sufficient, you know, when we're talking about God's power resting, there really is something to be said about knowing the freedom that you have in Christ. You know, somebody that deals with intrusive thoughts or things like that, it's like, how, how, do, I, how do I carry that? How do I, how do I just move forward with that and, and, and push through that? It has to do with understanding the freedom that you have in Christ. Like literally, God, I, I was so messed up, Pastor, that God had to lavish his freedom on me. And when yeah. I read, is it Ephesians, Galatians 5, 4 or 5, it is for freedom. And he's talking about, you know, the law and stuff. That he made me, us free. It's for freedom that Christ has set you free. One day I read that and I thought, wow. And I began to just laugh. Thank God you know me more than anybody. Hmm. That's why you didn't want the doctor to totally set me free or the person who prayed for me to totally deliver me and remedy that you wanted relationship with me because you want to be the one. I, I remember telling my dad when I got touched by the Holy Spirit, I called him and said, dad, you're not going to believe what happened to me. I felt this. And then it's this way he told me, now, you know, it's personal. Hey. Mm. And I was like, man, he reserves the copyright on Brandon. Yeah. So when I go out, if something goes down, I don't need to, hey, can you reaffirm me that I'm not doing this? Because that's one of the things that OCD people do. Like they confess things over and over. I did this to my wife, fall around forever. Hey, confess this, confess this. So when, say it back to me, say it back to me. Did you hear what I said? I need to be certain that you heard what I said to try to remedy this thing. God wants relationship. 
and he will take his sweet time until he gets it. He will take 10 years, but once he gets it, once, he, once you understand what that grace is and that love, oh my God, he loves me. Yes. Then you're able to see it. And now you're like, now you're turned on. Now you're like my dad was where he's just like, whoa, let's go. You know, <laughs> because, yes. he, because yeah. he understands it's there, but it takes somebody like my dad who strung out on dope, mm. couldn't, could not do it, and then dynamite, boom, to hit him and be like, everybody's different. Everybody's got their story. You know what I'm saying? But with me, I, I feel like God just used me for, for such a time as this. I was reading a, a, a stat. Check this out. This comes from, um, I pulled this up, just doing some research on, on is it, what county are we in here? P- P- Pima. Pima. Pima yeah. County. This is um, coming from... KOLD 13. Yeah. It says there was a 67% increase in suicides among minors ages 12 to 17 years old. And there was 57% increase in suicides in adults ages 50 to 59. Is this during the pandemic? During the pandemic. And then it says here, this is from USA Today, the rate of suicide among those aged 10 to 24 increased nearly 60% between 2007 and 2018, this is according to Centers for Disease and Control Prevention. Yeah. So there's a trajectory. Yeah. And people, there's theories, oh, social media, this and that. But there's something going down that I foresee. God, maybe you allowed me, when I questioned you, and I said, why are you doing this? All things work together for yeah. the good. Maybe there's some, if I can, if somebody's listening and I could say, hey, you know, you're not alone. Yeah. You, the thoughts that you think, the things that you're feeling, those are just feelings. You're not, you're not strange. There's no, there, people do understand you. There's yeah. people that will understand you. There's people that will love you. Hang on because you can be delivered. You can live a, a normal life. I used to think I, there's no way. My wife will tell you, I would say, I don't ever see, she, she remembers me saying this, I don't. She, she says that I said, I don't ever, I truly don't ever believe I'll ever be able to be happy again. Yeah, that's a terrible place to come to. But you will. Yeah. You the sun will shine. Yes. And and I feel the church is what God is doing within the church is can he will he deliver people right there? Yeah, he will. But what I what I see him doing is the same uh thing I saw him do in Maringá in Brazil. I was down in Brazil about a year and a half ago. And I was going to different cities and I was sharing my testimony and they would be lining up, Pastor, and I'd pray for them. I have a translator and they would be coming to me and I, the, these thoughts that I have, I can't go this. And they're beautiful people. Don't look strange. Look like, look just yeah. normal, great people dealing with this stuff. And it wasn't until I got to Maringa, that last church, my last stop, the altar was, was, was full of people that came down and responded. And I said, I can't pray for all these people. There's no way. I'll be here till three o'clock in the morning. And so I said, I want you to start to pray for one another. And I saw with my eyes the older generation and mm-hmm. the newer generation hugging, mm-hmm. sobbing over each other's necks, smiles, you know, this compassion. I said, that's what you're trying. That's why, Lord, you're wanting to bring this beautiful culture and cultivate this deeper established rooted of of healing and love in a brand new way and and that's that's what i feel is going down you know yeah it's this it's, the scripture that uh captures all of this in luke 4 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor We have good news, ladies and gentlemen. This is the greatest news uh, ever. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, 
that the oppressed will be set free. Yeah. And so as a pastor, you have to have that. Uh, When you look at people, I'm not just looking at them as they are today, struggling, et cetera, with various things. No, I look at what God can do Mm -hmm. and what God can make them. And you have to have a long-term vision. Yeah. uh, Not just a short term, but a long-term vision to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe where I'm throwing you a softball to close this out, Mm -hmm. is that people struggling with mental or emotional health issues, they're not coming to a group of strangers to talk about their problems. Mm -hmm. So there has to be, in other words, they just... uh, Uh, Just speak to our audience, which really does uh, reach around the world, uh, whether England, uh, Africa, Namibia, uh, here in the States, of how, uh, because of that fact that people will not come on their own necessarily Mm -hmm. and share their problems like that, what can we as the church do it may not be the the whole you know recipe, but what can we do to make a difference? Mm-hmm. Well, I think you're doing it right now. This the fact that we're talking about it right now is huge. Yeah, you know, I think that's step number one. Uh, I think also is beginning to 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 listen, sit down and listen to the people within your church that may be struggling with this. Just mm-hmm. don't don't just spit off solutions right away. Just come and just listen. Just listen to what they have to say. Um, I think that's going to help people uh, approach and, and, and come out of the woodwork, so to speak. You mm-hmm. know, like for example, when I said, "Hey, how many people here, you know, <laughs> have this?" and they're like, "Nobody's crickets," you yeah. know. But then they they show up afterwards. They're there. Yeah. The facts. What the facts I just read you. Uh, the 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 stats are there. Yeah. So they, and they're coming to the church for answers. And I think I want to speak to leadership as well, because I was a pastor's kid. And when you're raised in ministry and you're, you're a product of that environment, it's even more difficult because you feel like I shouldn't be dealing with these things. But it's okay. It's okay. You, you, the, the good news is that um, God knows it. Yeah. He still loves you. And uh, maybe your pastor or your person you're around hasn't they don't quite get it yet but that's okay god's using you to bring this to the light to the surface for healing for for a a resolution it's going to happen i feel like in the same way that for example i'm a runner and you used to cycle yeah right we both know that the training is super hard yeah right and but if you get around a community of people who are runners You'll, you share in that training. You share in that ex- experience. When you cross the finish line, there's a joy and yeah. a victory that oh, you yeah, share yeah. with that person yeah. that's like nobody else is going to yeah. understand it but y'all. Yeah, after 109 miles, when you see the <laughs> finish line uh, 200 <laughs> yards in front of you, all of a sudden there's a new strength. <laughs> And you know what? I'm gonna yeah. just uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna get there. Right. So yeah. you know, I long to pastor a church and to create an atmosphere. Not you know, this isn't uh, let's get together and uh, you know, elderly people get together and share their physical ailments. Sure, I always said, yeah, yeah, Lord, yeah. I don't want to no. be like that. That's not what you want. No. But uh, we're not talking about that. Mm-mm. But an an atmosphere, a climate where there is an openness that yeah. Jesus came yeah. to set the captive free, and He loves me. And yes. you know what? I can come. Uh, and uh, to, you know, there's a, no there's a ju- finish line, n- no judgment. And there's a finish line that you can share together. Yeah. You know, carry each other's burdens and thus fulfill the law, law of Christ. There's something that you can walk out together. It doesn't mean you come and just boom, you just 
expose every crazy thing you've ever been through. Look, it, we're all crazy. If we did that, we'd hate each other. Right, <laughs> we right. couldn't stand each other. But the idea is, no, there is, there's people all over the world, Christians, great leaders, people that are going through things. Guess what? There's only one perfect person, that's Jesus. So be comfortable knowing that God's got you on a path. And if you stay the course and you don't go for the fried ice cream, as my dad would say, yeah. don't go for the fried ice cream, <laughs> right? That's how, that's how he would say it. Uh, it's it's the same old tricks. It's the same old lies. The devil's a liar. He's he's going to paint this big facade and say something's not right with your spirit. Something's not. No, it's just you're going to get yourself together, get around the people, get people who would say, hey, man, let's go out. Let's have a good time. Let's laugh. Let's go outside. Do the, do the things and stop digging so much into this over spiritualizing everything and yeah. just get back on track. God's got you. He took somebody like me that was, if you would have saw you, been this dude's a nut bag. He's, he's crazy. You're not crazy. You're never going to be crazy. It's just, hey, it's just your brain. And, and God's got you, man. He's got you. It's going to work out. Yeah. So uh, this has been very, very helpful. Uh, Gabe, do you have anything else you want to add? No, or? I mean, just uh, just real quick, how many times have you gone out, hung out with brothers and sisters in the Lord, and you guys are having an amazing time, and then you get that text, you know, two hours later, like, hey, I totally needed that. You don't know what I'm going to Totally, right bro, yeah. And you talked about nothing deep. It was point. just a bunch of crazy stuff, <laughs> and you're just trying out all of your new, you know, comedy routines on everybody. <laughs> yeah. And then they're... Te- I and mean, I was pastoring in, in Roswell, New Mexico, and I took a guy out to a, a basketball game, and we had a high school basketball, and we just had a great time. And he texted me later on, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm suicidal. Mm. And I was thinking about it, and you called me, and we went. And, and so it was just, it was nothing, yeah. but it was everything. There you go. So there you go. I believe there's a lot more than, than we can actually articulate and understand. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be uh, following episodes uh, dealing with uh, the subject of emotional health. You can't exhaust it. I uh, uh, actually have to fight the urge to continue to talk and <laughs> laugh. Uh, but uh, we are going to be uh, digging deep. Uh, we are going to be uh, talking about this uh, for the purpose of your edification and you finishing the race. And so if you have not yet subscribed to our podcast uh, on our YouTube channel or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I encourage you to go uh, subscribe, uh, uh, give us uh, five stars uh, that I guess... uh, Like, comment, do all that stuff that helps in the algorithm. Make a comment below that video, like it, share it, it. do all that stuff. Get that algorithm going. Yeah, so get that... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you get that algorithm. uh, It's mojo working, and so uh, we appreciate all of you that has uh, been with us. I hope this has been helpful, and so uh, be blessed. Uh, Know that God loves you and he is working out his plan and purpose. And he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Uh, Lay hold of that. Say, that is my reality, not these other things. And so we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, God bless you. 